Hello everyone, welcome to the demo version of Airborne Empire. This is just a demo version. The full version is due to be released in a few months. I was provided the key to this demo version by the developers because I had previously covered Airborne Kingdom, which was the prequel. Uh, but everybody presumably will be able to try out the demo version in a few days as part of the Steam Next Fest. And so here we are. And it is basically a game where you are building an airborne city. And I'll talk about the physics of that later, but it's fairly simple as far as getting into it. It doesn't it doesn't have a steep learning curve or anything like that, and it's fairly relaxing as you can tell by the music. And so we have these uh, tutorial blurbs at the beginning, and they don't always pop up. They're sort of off to the side if you need them, and you'll see them appear. But yeah, we just need to build housing for people as part of our city, and it's a city management game, sort of. Uh, it's a resource collection game, and now it is also a defending against pirates game, as we have pirates to contend with. I zoom in to, so you can see the detail of what's going on. Our characters are birds of various kinds, and they talk in tweets. Uh, not the Twitter kind of tweets, they're, they're actually tweeting. And so here we are putting our uh, hanger on. Well, actually, we need to build paths first. So there's like the roads in the city building game, and then we can put the hanger on. And our planes are used to collect resources. And you can see the little blurbs on the side there: basic controls, people in work. I haven't read those yet. They don't like pop up and interfere with you unless you want to read them. And this is the map. Uh, so we're beginning over here, and it shows your current target. Uh, for whatever quest you are, have picked with a big red circle. And so here we have people in work, either worker count, you can see that stuff at the top. Uh, if you have played a similar sort of game with resources and management before, you should be pretty familiar with this. One thing I was surprised it didn't pop up with right away was the resource collection, like telling you how to collect resources, which is just click on a resource and then assign workers to it. The workers will automatically take the planes out to collect the resources. Uh, assuming you have enough planes and enough workers, of course. And so I am setting about doing that, getting the various things that we need. The coal is to power your propulsion system, including staying up. And the iron ore will be to build stuff as well as the wood that we get from the forest. The towns are where you pick up people. Uh, so you have to pay for pay to hire them and the payment goes up depending on how many you already have so it starts out with 25 uh, coins and then or whatever they call the currency and then it'll go up from there to 30 35 and so forth depending on how many people you already have our first target is Haven Mill and this is where the main quest sort of begins we have to go to the tower to talk to uh, magistrate Agatha who keeps calling me kid which was sort of irritating, uh, but yeah, well, there are people like that. And so Magistrate Agatha wants us to help rebuild after a pirate attack, so we have to provide wood and iron. The thing about iron is we get the ore, but we have to actually convert it into the iron. And so we will need a smelter or whatever it's called. Uh, so we need the academy, which is what I built there, because we need to research the buildings. and. Right now, we don't have the ability to convert iron ore to iron. And so once the academy is complete, we've got the iron... Okay, it's not smelter, it's forge. That makes sense. Uh, so we are now researching the iron forge. Once it's researched, we can build one. So there it is, research. And then once we've got that, we can convert the iron ore we've already collected into the iron that the town needs or also that we need. So... Here we have a lot of different pages of stuff that we don't know about. There are a lot of question marks and we're basically going to have to pay for research or get the research via the main quest. And once we've got the basic buildings, uh, there are nodes to research that increase the efficiency or efficacy of those buildings. So that is the idea. So warehouses, another thing that we've got. And you can see, you can sort of visualize how this all works together. It's fairly simple. And so here we go. 
we pick up some more peoples. I generally go with the ones who have the most positive attitude. I viewed it like I was hiring people. And so the ones that seemed very enthusiastic about being an heir, I uh, uh, snapped them up really quickly and only resorted to the ones that were going like, well, if you pay me well, uh, well I, I left those for if I was really desperate for workers. A lesson to all of us. Anyway, but... <laughs> Uh, so, here it is, we've got that, and first I decided to get the stuff that we needed uh, using the iron that we were forging. So I added a set of lift engines, which gives us 12 lift. We have the lift right at the center of the top bar. Uh, right now we have a capacity of 72, and of course as we add buildings, we will use that capacity up. And then once I got the stuff I wanted, like the warehouse as well, I gave the stuff that Magistrate Agatha needed, and they are now repairing. So that we have to wait for. There's a big bar on top of Haver Mill, and then once they are done, we talk to Magistrate Agatha again. And at this point, I was actually pining for the street lamps because that's one thing that's limiting the physical size of your city is you have to build lights around and the town center only has a certain area of influence with its lights. And thankfully, that is what Magistrate Angela gives us. It gives us the technology for street lamps and also some glass will come along with that once we research it. But glass is pretty hard to come by. And one way you can get it is by trading with merchants. And otherwise, I haven't been able to make it yet. Uh, so at some point, we'll have to find a source of whatever it is we need to make glass with. That would be nice. So anyway, this is the merchant. And we can sell the iron. That's easy enough. But there are other ways of getting money. So we don't need to be desperate about that. Having been told where to get defensive weaponry from, uh, we immediately get attacked by pirates uh, because we need a taste of what it's like when we can't defend ourselves and we haven't gotten to the place where we can get the defense tower yet. So here they come, the pirates, and there they are. There's a fairly light wave. The strength of the pirates certainly varies. But they did damage, and the damage is right at the top next to the lift indicator it is a red indicator that occurs when you've got damage and so I repaired that clicking on that and then added some street lamps and you can see the area of influence that they have so I'll put them up further there but they have to be on paths they also act as paths so that I could just put it as part of the path next time but anyway we did that and collecting more resources I wanted to get cloth, and right now we don't have the ability to turn the cotton into cloth, but that is one of those things that we will have to purchase. That's a science that we will have to purchase, not something that we can just research already. There it is, that's our city, and here is where we get the defensive towers from. These are the blueprints that you have to purchase in order to unlock some of the buildings. And so the hemp weaver is what we need to take the cotton and turn it into cloth. And we talk to this captain in order to get our defensive towers. As usual, we'll have to do the research via the academy and then get them. He's a bit of a blusterer. All the characters are very... character -y. <laughs> They have character, <laughs> if you will. So, yeah. There are attempts at humor here. So, okay, we got that. And we also get a mission from Captain Marner. And that is to find this ranger, one of his esteemed rangers. So, we get another location on the map, and that's another quest. So, we'll constantly get new quests and stuff like that. So, Defense Tower, of course, we have to do the research. After the defense tower is researched, I go back to researching what I was trying to research. I had to cancel that. Of course, you can only do one bit of research at a time. And you can take uh, the people tasked to do the research out and give them other tasks temporarily. So I have often had to do that because we were desperate for other things. But really, research takes a lot of priority. I decided to change the color of things. Try that out. So here we have a change of color. Keep in mind that this is the demo version. 
So, and they are looking for feedback and bug reports. I didn't encounter any bugs, so at least nothing that I noticed. So here we are, coloring things. I mean, it's a set number of options, but that's all right. At least we can apply to everything at once once we've made our decision. So we can apply to type or we can apply to everything. We could get a really colorful place if we apply to type and have different color schemes for different types. And finally, here I build the defense tower, which is like a little cannon on top of a tower, <laughs> basically. Old style cannon, of course. This has a particular art style, which is different from Airborne Kingdom. And Airborne Kingdom actually serves as sort of a legend in this. So Airborne Kingdom is part of the lore of this world and they refer to it often and yeah so that is like the primordial flying city and then you're in a way uh, sort of homage to the airborne kingdom trying to defend it against pirates and everything give hope to people who are otherwise beleaguered okay so we go back to magistrate magistrate agatha and we have other things to do, building their defense tower. Once that's done, we can move on. We get a reward for that, which is good, because we need the money in order to unlock the buildings. So there we go, mention of uh, the old airborne kingdom. Okay, we'll need a weapon of our own. It's been a while since I played Airborne Kingdom, so I don't recall how different the mechanics are from this. They seem fairly similar. Uh, but. Yeah, I'll just not comment on that aspect of things. We do get another task to go to another city. And so we are headed to this Orange Spire. But before I do that, I decide to pick up some of this technology. I was looking at the Hemp Weaver to get the cloth, which we could also use for trade. I don't know what other purpose it has, but it does seem to get consumed somewhat for things, for perhaps buildings. But also I wanted the propeller because we're going rather slowly now. Uh, right next to the lift there's a percentage of how fast you could be going versus how fast you are going and we're like at 30% of how fast we could be going. So that's a little bit sad. So I wanted propellers, but I decided it was a little bit too expensive with the money I already have. But I spied in the distance a uh, ruin and you can basically send a plane out to the ruin to uh, get gold. The res uh, looking at the ruins, exploring the ruins gives you gold. So since I was going to get gold from exploring that ruin, I decided to pick up the propeller after all. So that's what I did there, and we are researching propellers so that we can go faster. And then pirates attack. But now we have a defense tower, so I'm heading to that, heading to that ancient ruin to get more money. And we now have propellers. And while I'm trying to look for new technology, we get attacked. But our defense tower does work, and it seemed a very light attack anyway. So that was all right. One other thing you can do to go faster is just to upgrade the town center's capability to go faster. And so it'll improve its propellers. So you don't only have to do propellers, but I did two. Ultimately, one on one side, one on the other on the outboard. So we have those two propellers there. Along the way to our next destination, I noticed a few things. First of all, there's another one of those ancient ruins that we can take advantage of, get more money. But also we have this ore mine up front, right there, that mining camp. And even though I wasn't intending to do the quest or the mission, that was associated with these. It turns out that I was just going along this way anyway and found this thing. So the mission was from the merchant to give them each 10 food, these various camps like that one and this one. And that turned out very lucrative too because I got 250 coin from each of those. Though there were other locations that I gave food to that didn't pay me. So I don't know how much that runs. Built some more houses. Another technology that we need to get, except for the hemp weaver, is also clinics. As once we get past like 30 people, people are st gonna start getting sick, and also from the pirate attacks, people can get injured. And we are collecting quite a few people here. 
nothing like the cities. I know people built rather large Airborne Kingdoms in Airborne Kingdoms, so I'm aware that we can expand quite a bit more than what we've got right now. There is room for expansion. Okay, so like that's the resupply the outpost mission that uh, I did with the iron mining camp. But I decided to focus on the Arm the Kingdom one. And so we're talking to this location, which can hopefully provide us with more armaments, except for the defensive tower, maybe something a little bit more offensive. And it turns out that the person we need is not here. Yeah, uh, this, this uh, Isidore is not super helpful. And we have to wait a bit. And we have to find somebody else. So, uh, we need to find the chief engineer, Regina. And we have a location on the map for that. But I decided not to go straight for that. We also have this other mission from Scholar Cornelius. So, our missions are piling up. Sort of reminds me of Starfield like that with the missions. But anyway. So, yes. Temples now. We've got temples. I'm not too sure I'm going to prioritize the temple thing. Not too sure about that one. All right, so there's that temple of Alias. And I build the Hemp Weaver, but every time the pirates attack, they seem to take it out. I have to keep rebuilding it. It's like the most vulnerable thing ever. So, okay, but we have another industry. We've got the iron being made. We have the cloth being made. We just can't make glass, which is for the street lamps. And there are more pirates. So here they come. We also have that interesting object there, and we'll investigate that later. Sometimes from the pirates' incoming message to when they arrive is quite a long time. I mean, when I say quite a long time, I'm talking like 20, 30 seconds. So that's a little bit perplexing, but I can get help you get sorted out before they arrive. Uh, this particular battle took a little bit longer than some of the previous ones, and some of the battles are going to be pretty rough. Anyway, after dealing with those, the defense tower still managed its thing. Uh, we looked at this little object, which had another mission for us. So everybody's got little fetch missions and stuff like that. So we talked to this one. Also one that I will be putting off, frankly speaking. I would like to explore the map, but I did find some impediments to exploring the map, as we will soon see. I wanted to head to this particular thing bridging this river. And there was a pirate ground cannon. And basically they are laying siege to this city. And I couldn't even talk to the city as I got closer. I was trying. Unknown kingdom. And I was trying to get closer, but that is a threatening cannon. I imagine those cannonballs would do quite a lot of damage if they hit. So it's a good thing that they're basically stormtroopers as far as their aim. Uh, but it turns out that the city seems to be a little bit worse for wear there, and we ultimately will be tasked to help it out. But that's a little bit later. I was exploring right now, and we really weren't told to go in this direction yet. And there's a good reason for that, because the enemies are rather formidable around here. So as we get further out from our starting location, the pirates seem to be much more vicious. And so this particular wave dealt, uh, dealt a lot more damage. And it was quickly followed up by another wave of pirates. But here's this one. You can see it's taking a while. And we have a lot of repairs to do. And we just keep coming. I really want to arm the planes. But I guess that I'm not too sure when we get that. I assume that must happen. I hope so. But anyway, that town is not friendly. So I decided to turn around and head back to what I'm supposed to be doing, which is finding Regina, the chief engineer. And she is supposed to give me cannons. So then I can maybe fight against those ground cannons and destroy the ground cannons and thereby save the other town. And maybe take over some towns, I don't know. I don't know, I don't think the Flying City is really into the taking over ground towns thing. I decide, I don't know if it's a good idea or not, to put another uh, one of those hangars as redundancy. Just thought that was a good idea. I wanted two up front anyway. The, as far as the physics is concerned, I teased this earlier. Uh, 
Flying cities could work if the atmosphere is really super thick. I, actually, the only thing that uh, sort of rubbed me the wrong way physically is the fact that the ramps from the hangars is tilting up. Like, you don't need to go any higher. You're already in the air. You don't need the little planes to go any higher. So, the ramps would actually be flat or tilting downward. First of all, the planes tend to need to go down in order to gather resources anyway, as here I go to find the genome and get attacked also. But also, when the planes are coming back in, they'll need to slow down quickly, and so it's better that they're coming in on an upslope, so that slows them down. But that's the only picky thing that I'm going to have. Otherwise, Flying Cities I'm totally okay with. Uh, I love Flying Cities. Uh, as a kid, I'd watch Castle in the Sky, a famous anime film by Hiao Miyazaki. And I like that, as I seem to be overburdening my city. Bad thing to do. I built too many things, so I needed to quickly get a new lift engine, a lift fan. In that anime film, it's not a bunch of lift fans. They've got little magical gems that are levitation stones. Cheating, obviously. But uh, they also have robots, so that made up for it. Also very interesting aircraft designs. So, yes, I like floating cities. I'm pro-floating cities. So here we are. And the, actually, the pirate planes sort of remind me of the pirate planes from Castle in the Sky, too. Definite feel like that. Okay, we have to repair the fans. We're going down again. Thankfully, we don't go down immediately. But there is a thing that will make you go down very quickly, as I soon find out. And what that thing is running out of coal. <laughs> and you can see my coal resources are dwindling here as I finish repairs from the pirate attack. Getting more ore capacity is one of the things we can buy blueprints for, but obviously I hadn't done that yet. And so 30 runs out modestly quickly. I was just negligent in this case. But as we get heavier, I expect that it's going to run out quicker and quicker. So yes, zero. There it is. We've hit zero. And just just watch as we really lose. And now it's a, it's fractional right now. It's not really, really zero. But here, here we go. Here we go. I'm desperately trying to collect that coal from that coal deposit, but it hasn't come in yet. And we're about to crash. I don't know what happens if you actually hit the ground, whether it all breaks apart or whether uh, it just settles on the ground as a city. In that case, you need the upturned ramps if it's finally on the ground. That, that is true, but mostly we want to stay up. So anyway, we managed to not touch the ground, thankfully, and proceeded on our way. And I found Chief Engineer Regina, and Chief Engineer Regina needs some things to help her repair stuff. And so I gather those things. Actually, running out of lost supplies at this point. Partly from the pirate attacks. Exploring is difficult. You really need to outfit yourself properly if you're going to explore on this map. So, yeah. Eventually I got the stuff and we were able to head back once Regina had finished the repairs. So I'm just getting some extra cotton there. At this point I generally viewed the cloth as a tradable resource that I could get money for. And since the recruits are going to cost more and more, Seem like a good thing to have tradable resources. Alright, so we've got Regina in tow, basically. And we head back over to this <sighs> academic area of High Scholar Isidore. And Regina will give us the cannon. And so they have the little conversation. And we get the mission to save Queen Minerva, who is in that town that was besieged by pirates. That I will save for some other time. This is where I will conclude it, having gotten the cannon, having gotten the means to attack the pirates, potentially. I haven't tried it out yet. I think this is a good place to stop. And so, yeah, got that and ultimately unlocked it. I did not build a cannon yet and I gathered some more money and pirates attacked. <laughs> so. That happens. So here's the final pirate attack before I conclude here. There they are. Definitely reminding me of Studio Ghibli sort of planes. 
But this is relatively light compared to the one that I faced when we were going really far out. Or at least really far out compared to where I've gone so far. But anyway, that is Airborne Empire for you. And it's a very relaxing game still. And pirates uh, notwithstanding, it's still fairly relaxing. Don't relax too much though. I, uh, I mean, because when you relax you might run out of coal or something. And I imagine that it gets a lot more hectic when the flying town gets really big. Right now we're sort of a cute little flying town, but the mansion probably gets a little bit more intense once the size grows. And I don't know what all the buildings are, though a lot of the buildings that we don't have unlocked are the storage ones. So I've got a feel for what we've got going here. In mood, it sort of reminds me of Brew Barons, and I really need to get back to playing that as well, which also has a relaxed mood to it, and Pirates. <laughs> but, uh, I, I like these sorts of games where we're fighting against Pirates, it's good. The other type would be if we are Pirates, that's good too. Uh, but yeah, uh, this I think we've got a feel for, and it's a nice relaxing game, and I didn't face any problems with the demo. So. As I save here, and perhaps I will continue, but perhaps I'll wait for the full thing. I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.